Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this uh, October 19th edition of Keystroke Live. My name is David Hunsinger, and I am going to be talking about search and update price. We're, uh, we've talked a lot about these search and update functions, and um, you know, now we're, we're kind of going back through them on a more practical level and, and more of, you know, I'm going to show you how this gets used. Uh, a lot of times, on our end, we can sit here and say, gosh, you can do this, you can do that, you can do a million different things. Try to give you kind of a practical example on how it's used. Um, just remember Keystroke Live every Wednesday, 10 a.m., um, same time, same place, luckily the same login information. I apologize, I forgot to send out the email yesterday, so I, I got it out this morning. Um, and uh, not next Wednesday, but the Wednesday after will be the 1st of November, and you'll get to hear from Michael Gebb. So today we're going to talk about the search and update price function. And to give you a little background history, one is this, I kind of took a survey of the um, tech support guys upstairs, and, you know, they help people with this maybe, you know, once or twice a year. So it's not a highly used function. It, it was originally added uh, for one of our uh, great dealers, the Canard Kohler, had a liquor store, and um, there was another liquor store down the street, and they did a lot of price battles on beer, and they literally wanted to update their price of beer every day based on what the cost was. Their cost went down 10 cents, they wanted you know, their price to go down five cents or eight cents or whatever. So they were treating it very much like a commodity. Um, I've dealt with other liquor stores where they've said, no, you know, my six pack of Budweiser has to cost five ninety nine because I get people coming in every day counting out their change to buy a six pack of beer. But in this case, they wanted it to change every day because they were battling with the people down the street. So we came up with this search and update price. Um, you can uh, update uh, price, cost, basically everything based on an update price table. Um, the best way to set it up is you do the price table, you set up price formulas, and you give them a date, and then you can update different things based on what date you select searching on group of items and then the other thing that was real important when we originally set this up is you can run it from a batch file we have udprice.exe um, so that's in the keystroke program directory and you can run that from a batch file so that this can happen automatically in the background now my first thing I'm going to say is before you do search and update price you want to do a, a backup of your inventory now um, Everything that the search and update price function is going to touch is in the file ksinv.dat. So you can back that up, run search and update price. If you goof up all of your prices, you can just copy that back in. You just want to make sure nobody else is doing anything within Keystroke while you're doing the search and update price function. So um, what I have done here is I just have created two little batch files, um, and it's easy to do, that just copies uh, ksinv.dat to ksinv.dsh, my initials, and then that's the backup, and then I have the restore that can copy the dsh back to the uh, inv. You can also do a quick archive in the database function, um, so there's a lot of uh, different ways to do that quick backup. But really, you just want to be sure you've got that ksinv.dat really before you run any search and, whether it's search and replace or search and update price. But you can certainly change things a lot. So now I'm going to move into Keystroke to show you what we are doing here. So at first, I'm going to go into the Configuration Manager. And under File, uh, I'm sorry, Tables and Price and Tables, kind of simplified this. I have a Price Adjustments. That's the default table for the search and update price. 
then I set up this update price. And so basically what I'm going to do first is I'm going to keystone all of my inventory. So what I'm going to do is this is kind of my, I'm going to, my function to reset all the prices within keystroke. And I'm going to take the average cost and mark it down negative 100%. Or if you look down here at the bottom of the screen, it'll say the amount equals average cost plus 100%. So it's making the price calculated double the average cost. So I can just go ahead and save that. And now I can go into my database manager and I'm going to select my inventory database and select find and my search and update price. Now I want to reset everything in my inventory. This is the search screen so I can just leave it blank and it'll match everything and update everything. If I just wanted to do say my office supply department, I could put off in here and so it would only find the office records, so only update the office records. But I'm just kind of going to reset everything. So I'm just going to hit F10 or page down here. And it brings up what price do I want to update? I'm updating base price. What price table? Update price. And just a handy reminder, I can hit insert or F, I'm sorry, I can hit F3 here to edit that so that I can see what I'm doing here. i am got my average cost. I'm doubling it or keystoning it, as some people cost, call it. And then price date, I'll talk about that in a minute. I'm just going to leave it there for now. Then I hit OK, and it asks me confirm price change on each record. When I'm talking to somebody on the phone, what I always say is set up your search and whether it's search and replace or search and update price. When you get this question, answer yes. And here, if you, it might be kind of small on your screen, but down it says change this item's base price from $20 to 1890 because it's going to take this 945 last cost, double it, um, and I'm going to end up with 1890. So I'm going to answer yes. Then I'm going to hit escape, cancel search. One price was updated. I can just pay, hit page up and say, okay, great. It updated my base price from $20 to 1890. Didn't mess with anything else. Did what I wanted it to. So now I can come in to find search and update price. My settings are still here. This is blank. I hit F10. I come in here and say update price. Okay. And then I'm going to say confirm change to each record. No. And it goes through. It's counting through my um, database. It only updated 64 prices because there were already a certain number of prices that were um, updated. So basically I've got that um, my base price is the double the average cost for my inventory items now. Um, didn't update, obviously, some of these because they were set at zero. Oh, here, if we go, but if I move up, $2, $4, $1, $2, um, get through some of my 47 cents, 94 cents. 745, 1490, so it's all ready to go. Now I can do it um, for groups of items. So here I'm going to go find search and update price. So now let's say I want to update my office supplies. So I'm going to put office, so I'm narrowing down what I'm updating. I'm not updating everything in my database, I'm only updating items that have a department of off, um, I can hit in, in, oh, I can't, I can't hit insert there, oh, sorry, I messed that up. So I'm going to go find, search and update price, I've got office here, that's my office supply, I can hit F12 and look at department, OFF or office supplies, okay, good, that's what I want to do. Then I hit F10 or page down, 
Now I'm going to use my price adjustments. And again, I'm going to hit F3 here. To, well, and do I have F2, F3? <laughs> oh, F2, F3, thank you. Um, so here's my office updating base price. And what I've got here is I've got last cost plus 20%. So I'm going to change my base price to be last cost plus 20%. And then I have a date range in here of January 1st, 2016. So what I can do is I'm going to select that price adjustments and I'm going to put in my January 1st, 2016. So what that's going to do, it's going to make my um, whatever I'm updating, in this case base price, it is going to do cost plus 20 percent so again I'm going to select OK here and it says you know careful you could goof things up I do have a backup OK confirm chain price change each record remember I always like saying hey check out what you're doing I'm going to say yes and it comes to my um, stock number 19 steno notebook and right now it's 94 cents. It's going to change it to 56. Why 56? Well, 20% um, of 47 cents is what about nine um, cents. So it it's going to update it from 94 to 56 cents. So I say yes, and then I'm going to hit escape, cancel search. It updated one record. I can hit page up and look it updated it to 56 cents it's what I wanted so I can go back to find search and update price I've still got my office in there I hit F10 and then remember I want to base it on 1116 or it won't update it right I can select OK proceed OK answer no goes through my update and it found 23 matches 24 matches and update 23 prices. Now, the other thing I had there, if I go find, search and update price, I'm going to do the office department again. I'm going to hit F10 or page down. And here, F2, F3, I've got my office list to update. So my list is going to be average cost plus 75%. And its date is January 10th. So I select price adjustment. I'm going to change this to list price and say this is 110.16. Proceed, confirm change. I'm going to say yes. I come to this record. It says, okay, it's 118 right now. It's going to change it to 82 cents. That sounds about right. That's how I want it to work. So I hit um, yes, escape, one price updated. Can hit page up and look, it changed it to 82 cents. That's what I wanted. So I can do find, search and update price. I'm still on office. I hit F10. I simply change this to 110.16. And then I can answer no, and it's going to change my 24 records. So now I've got that all updated and changed, my list price, my base price. Things are updated, ready to go. Now there's one other thing we can do um, with this that I will show you. And I think I was doing this with um, the liquor department. I'm going to hit F10 or page down. In here, I'm going to hit insert and then edit. And my liquor, I've got it set to be average cost plus 40%. And then I'm also rounding it to 99 cents. There's a nice little test feature here. So if my um, calculation calculates $23.56, the rounded price is going to be 
if it calculates, um, you know, 442, my rounded price is going to be 399. You know, so it's calculating all those to uh, the nearest 99 because I want all my prices to end in 99 cents for my liquor department. Not necessarily for everything, but for my liquor department. So I can just select OK and save that. Hit F10. Oh, one other thing. What did I forget to check there? I am going to um, hit F2 and F3 again. My liquor I have set for the month of February. So basically any date in February I can put in and this price adjustment will take effect. So um, I am going to do my price adjustment. I'm going to update base price and I'm going to say I'm going to base this on 2116. Click OK. Warning, do a backup. Confirm change. I'm going to answer yes. And I get to my uh, stock number 69, Chardonnay. And my base price is $20. It's going to change it to $13.99 because that is $10 plus $4 is $14 then it rounds it to the 99 cents. I'm going to say yes. Hit escape, cancel search, hit page up and it changed my base price to 13.99. So now I can just go back to my find, search and update price, hit F10 or page down, enter my date of 2116, select okay. I'm going to proceed. No. And then it's going to go through and it changed my four or five liquor items to be priced that way. Um, so there's a lot of powerful things you can do with the search and update price. Um, I am going to switch what I'm showing to my command prompt. And this is where you have, remember, I've got my update price. Dot exe, my little program. I can follow it with a forward slash question mark. And it brings up the show doc. And hopefully you are seeing this is our little don't know if it's displayed yet or not. There it is. Um, yeah, we see it update price document. So if you're ever using one of our little standalone utilities, um, it's an old IBM thing, you can follow it with the forward slash question mark and get the help, or this file resides in the docs subdirectory of Keystroke, so you can always look for it there too. But it tells you how to use this, the format of what price table, what you're updating, um, what the default date is, if you want any filter. So you can create a batch file to have this run automatically. Obviously, you want to be careful with doing this if you're, you know, changing prices every day. You want to be sure you've got it set up right and very specific. But, you know, you can do a lot of powerful things here. If people want to reset prices at the end of the year, um, if you want to change just everything for a certain line. That's where the, the search function comes into hand. I was, I was searching on um, department, but you could say description contains bicycle or prices less than 99 cents. I want to make them all 99 cents. There, there's kind of a lot of different things you can do with this search and update price function. Powerful, also dangerous. You can hurt a lot of what all your prices are. Um, and with that, I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. So just remember, you've got that search. You don't have to search on department like I did. You can do it via liked priced items or uh, by description, category, a uh, lot of different things you can use there. You can update price, list price, price levels one, two, three. You can get pretty complex, but you know you don't want to outsmart yourself and make it too difficult. And you can do it from a batch file. So with that, I don't think I've muted anyone. Are there any questions?
I guess just like all our tech support people, there's not a lot of questions on this. Um, <laughs> trying to do a little more practical stuff. Next week, Lynn is going to talk. There's a search and hide function. And um, the differences between hiding records and deleting records, you know, what the pros and cons of each one are. So, you know, not only rather than just saying here's how you hide them, we're going to talk more about when it's better to hide records and when it's better to delete or reuse records. So um, that is coming up next Wednesday. So hide versus delete database records with Lynn. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and uh, have a